When people think about managing blood sugar, they often want to jump to that one pill or supplement that will solve everything. But here's something that I remind my clients all the time. Before you layer on advanced strategies, you have to make sure the basics are covered. And by basics, I mean vitamins and minerals. These are your body's building blocks, the nutrients that make everything else work. If you're low in even one or two of them, your metabolism, insulin signaling, and energy balance can all take a hit. So today I'm walking you through five of the most important micronutrients for blood sugar regulation and what the research says about how they help. If you want to jump right to the important info, I've put together a downloadable summary sheet with dosages, food sources, and who might benefit the most from each one. You'll find the link down in the description. But remember, it's always a good idea to check with your doctor before supplementing with anything. If you're new here, hi and welcome. I'm Julie Montgomery. I'm a holistic nutritionist and I help people stop prediabetes in its tracks and balance blood sugar with strategies that are both science-backed and realistic. All right, so let's dive in. Number one, chromium picolinate. Chromium is a trace mineral, meaning that you only need tiny amounts, but it has a huge impact on how your body uses insulin. It enhances insulin receptor activity, helping insulin bind more effectively to your cells and allowing glucose to enter more efficiently. And research shows that chromium picolinate, the form most often used in supplements, can improve insulin sensitivity, especially in people who are insulin resistant or who have prediabetes. Now, some studies even show modest reductions in fasting glucose and hemoglobin A1c when chromium is used consistently. Typical doses range from 200 to 1,000 micrograms per day. You'll also find chromium naturally in foods like broccoli, whole grains, and meats. But soil depletion means that many people still fall short. Okay, number two, magnesium. Magnesium is involved in over 300 enzyme reactions in the body, including the ones that help your cells use glucose for energy. It also supports insulin receptor function and glucose transport. Now, here's the catch. Most people don't get enough magnesium, especially if they eat a lot of processed foods or have higher stress levels. Stress really eats up magnesium. And research shows that low magnesium is strongly associated with insulin resistance and a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Studies show that magnesium supplementation can improve fasting glucose, insulin sensitivity, and even blood pressure. A nice bonus if you're working on overall metabolic health. Now, good food sources include pumpkin seeds, leafy greens, almonds, and avocado. Supplemental doses range from 200 to 400 milligrams of elemental magnesium per day, ideally as magnesium glycinate, citrate, or malate for best absorption. And number three, zinc. Zinc doesn't get much attention when we talk about blood sugar, but it should. This mineral plays a direct role in insulin storage and secretion. Now, it also protects the pancreas from oxidative stress, something that's especially important in insulin resistance. Studies show that zinc supplementation can help lower fasting glucose, improve insulin sensitivity, and support beta cell function. Now, beta cells are what produce insulin. Zinc-rich foods include oysters, beef, chicken, and pumpkin seeds. And for supplementation, most people do well with 10 to 30 milligrams of zinc per day, usually as zinc glycinate or gluconate. Now, just a quick note, long-term high doses of zinc can interfere with copper absorption. So balance matters here. And number four, inositol. Now, inositol acts more like a signaling molecule than a vitamin, helping insulin communicate with your cells. The two main forms, myo-inositol and d inositol work together to improve insulin sensitivity and glucose uptake. 
It's been extensively studied in women with PCOS, where it helps reduce insulin resistance, restore ovulation, and lower testosterone. But research also supports benefits for people with prediabetes and metabolic syndrome. Now, most studies use a 40 to 1 ratio of myo to d chiro inositol, often around 2 to 4 grams of myo inositol daily, paired with a small amount of d chiro. Now, it's gentle, safe, and can be a great foundational support for anyone struggling with insulin resistance. And finally, number five, vitamin D. The sunshine vitamin. Now, we usually think of it for bone health, but vitamin D also plays a key role in insulin sensitivity and immune function. Receptors for vitamin D are found on pancreatic beta cells and throughout the body's insulin pathways. Low levels are consistently linked to higher blood sugar, increased inflammation, and greater risk of type 2 diabetes. Now, supplementation studies show that correcting a deficiency can improve insulin sensitivity and lower fasting glucose, particularly in people who start with low baseline levels. Since most of us spend much of our time indoors, deficiency is incredibly common. It's worth having your levels tested and if needed, supplementing with 1,000 to 4,000 IUs per day depending on your blood levels and your healthcare provider's guidance. So there you have it, five key vitamins and minerals that give your body the foundation it needs to handle blood sugar efficiently. Chromium, magnesium, zinc, inositol, and vitamin D. Each plays a slightly different role, from improving insulin signaling to supporting pancreatic function. But together, they form the nutritional groundwork that everything else builds on. Now, if you want a quick summary sheet with all five, including dosages, food sources, and notes on who might benefit the most, check the download link in the description. And if you'd like to see my recommended supplement options, you can find them in my Fullscript account. Once you log in, look for the favorites category called YouTube Blood Sugar Video Favorites. That link is also down below. Now, this video wraps up my series on supplements for blood sugar, so if you missed the other ones, check out the playlist link down below. Here's a great one on little-known supplements that hardly anyone talks about. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, and share if you found this helpful, and I'll see you next time.